Hello all, and welcome to the next video in our Introduction to X-ray Diffraction series. This is Chapter 2, Part 1, and it will cover unit cells, crystal systems, and Bravais lattices. First off, atoms in crystalline solids like to arrange themselves in nice, orderly structures. Here, we see the simplest case where there is an atom at each corner of a cube. What we find is that this arrangement repeats itself throughout a sample, many more times than just the four shown here. That brings me to a couple definitions. We have point lattice. It is an arrangement of points in which each point has identical surroundings. In our case, this atom here has the same surroundings. It has an atom to the left, right, back, front, top, and bottom just like this atom. Its environment is exactly the same as every other atom in this set of cubes. A unit cell is the simplest repeating unit that represents the three-dimensional nature of the point lattice, which in this case is just that cube. Let's take a closer look at the unit cell, and I will show you some different aspects of it. X, Y, and Z, these are our crystallographic axes. Don't get too hung up on which is labeled X, Y, or Z. I just kind of chose them to be what I wanted. A, B, and C. These are the lengths of the different edges of our unit cell. Alpha, beta, and gamma. These are angles between the different edges of our unit cell. And then these lengths and angles comprise lattice constants or lattice parameters. A crystal system is a type of unit cell with atoms only at corners, which is what we see here in this unit cell. Finally, for this video, we are going to assume that all unit cells that we see only contain one type of atom, such as iron or terbium. It could be that you have a material that has multiple types of atoms. We are not going to address that in this video, but we will in a future video. Let's look more at those crystal systems. There are seven in total, and you see them all over here. This names the system and the corresponding relationships between the lengths and angles. Let's take a look at these one by one. We'll start off with the simplest, cubic. This is what we saw before, and it is exactly what you would expect from something called cubic. All three edges, A, B, and C, are equal and the angles between the different edges are all 90 degrees. If we look at tetragonal, we notice that the only difference is that A equals B does not equal C. Essentially, two of your edges are of the same length, but the third one is either longer or shorter. It doesn't really matter which one is longer or shorter. For this example, I'm just going to make that dimension a little bit longer, and now we have a tetragonal unit cell. Let's look at orthorhombic. This is just like tetragonal, only A does not equal B any longer, so the lengths of all three edges no longer equal each other. To get the orthorhombic unit cell, we can take the tetragonal and then make one of the other two edges either longer or shorter. Let's just see. I made that one shorter, and now we have an orthorhombic cell. If we move on to the rhombohedral, we see that A does equal B does equal C, so let's go back and grab that cubic cell again and modify it to get the rhombohedral. What we see is that alpha and beta and gamma all equal each other, but they no longer equal 90 degrees. An easy way of picturing how to get this type of unit cell is that if you had a string attached to this atom here, it runs through the diagonal of the unit cell and attaches to this atom here, and then there is enough string on either side to hold on to. If you pulled that string and kept all edge lengths from changing, well, then you would get a rhombohedral unit cell, which looks like this. Again, A equals B equals C, all angles equal each other, but none equal 90 degrees. Let's now move on to hexagonal, which is a bit different to picture than the others. We see one hexagon here, and one down here, connected by bonds. For a hexagonal system, 
A equals B does not equal C. Alpha equals beta, which equal 90 degrees, and then gamma equals 120. Initially, it can be a bit difficult to picture this unit cell in terms of the image shown here. It turns out, however, that this entire thing is not our unit cell. Remember, a unit cell is the simplest repeating unit that represents the three-dimensional nature of the point lattice. Well, the smallest repeating unit is actually this. And what we find is that A, this length here, equals this length B, but the C length is different. What we also see is that this angle here is 90 degrees, this angle here is 90 degrees, but this angle here is 120. So that is where we meet these requirements for the hexagonal system. I figured I would put three of these larger hexagonal groupings together, grade them out so that we can make things easier to follow along. Here we have our unit cell. If we shift it once to the right, we get another one. And then if we shift it right and down, we get another one. And we could keep doing this in the other directions. You can then start to see how this smaller unit cell does fill up the larger hexagonal pattern. Let's go back and grab the orthorhombic unit cell so that we can develop monoclinic from that. With orthorhombic, none of our three edges are of the same length, but all our angles are equal and equal 90 degrees. For monoclinic, again, none of the lengths equal each other, but now two of our angles equal 90 degrees, and the third angle does not equal 90. One way to think about this is, once again, keeping the lengths rigid so that they do not change. Just take, for example, this top plane of atoms and shift it to the right. If we do that, we see that this angle is still 90 degrees, this one still equals 90 degrees, but now this one will be different from 90. Finally, triclinic has the least amount of symmetry to it. Basically, none of your edge lengths are equal to each other, and none of the angles are equal to each other, and none of them equal 90 degrees. In other words, change everything and we get triclinic. It's kind of a mess. Here is a summary of all the different crystal systems. It doesn't really end there though, we have our crystal systems, but we also have Brave lattices. Again, to go back to the definition of a crystal system, it is a type of unit cell with atoms located only at corners. A possibly overly simplified definition of Brave lattice is that it is a type of unit cell with atoms located at corners and optionally other centered positions. Here we have all the Brave lattices listed for the different crystal systems, and we see that some systems have more Brave lattices than others. Systems such as rhombohedral, hexagonal, and triclinic only have simple. Monoclinic and tetragonal only have two. Cubic has three. And orthorhombic has all four types of Brave lattices. As such, we are going to look at the orthorhombic system so that we can make a more direct comparison of the different types of Brave lattices. First off, we have simple. It has the lattice symbol P, unless you are in the rhombohedral system, in which case it is listed as R, but I'm not going to get into that. Simple is just what we have been looking at. It is whatever the crystal system is, it is the ones with atoms only at the corners. We don't have to go into further detail on this one because we have already covered it pretty well. Body centered has the lattice symbol I. As the name implies, there is an atom sitting in the center of the unit cell. Base-centered has the lattice symbol C. This means that there are two opposing faces that have an atom centered in each face. Here we have an atom centered in the top face and the bottom face. Just to be clear, it does not have to be in these two faces. You could have atoms here or here. As long as it is only two opposing faces and no others, that is base-centered. As a bit more clarification, while only C is listed as the lattice symbol, it can really be A, B, or C. 
The lattice symbol C specifically applies when the atom is in the center of the face formed by the A and B edges. Finally, we have face centered, which has the lattice symbol F. In this one, there is an atom sitting in the middle of every face of the unit cell. Just to be clear, I made these atoms different colors, not to represent that they are different chemical species, but just to help you see which atom is sitting in which face. If I made all these atoms blue with blue lines, it would be more difficult to see. Just keep in mind that these are all the same type of atom. And then here we have an overall summary showing the four different types of Brave lattices. Finally, let's go through and determine how many atoms there are per unit cell for these different Brave lattices. First off, if you have a corner atom, regardless of Brave lattice type, that is shared amongst many different unit cells. We have four on the bottom that it is shared among and four unit cells on the top. This means that it is shared by a total of eight unit cells. Therefore, each corner atom contributes one eighth of an atom per unit cell. For a face centered atom, it is sitting in this one unit cell shown here and also this unit cell over here which means that it is shared by two unit cells and contributes half an atom per unit cell. Finally, a body-centered atom is completely contained within a single unit cell, so it contributes one atom per unit cell. Let's now go through the different Brave lattices. We see the simple Brave lattice. It has eight corner atoms. Each atom contributes one eighth of an atom per unit cell, so we have a total of one atom contained within the simple Brave lattice. For a body-centered lattice, again, we have eight corner atoms, but also one body-centered atom. The eight corner atoms each contribute one eighth of an atom per unit cell. That one body-centered atom contributes one atom per unit cell, so that gives us a total of two atoms for body-centered. For base-centered, we have eight corner atoms and two face-centered atoms. Once again, the eight corner atoms each contribute one eighth. The two face-centered atoms each contribute half an atom to each unit cell, which then totals two atoms per unit cell for base-centered. Finally, for face-centered, we have eight corner atoms, six face-centered atoms, and if we do the math on this one, we get four total atoms per face-centered unit cell. In summary, crystal systems have atoms only at corners, seven of them exist. Brave lattices have atoms at corners and, optionally, other centered locations, and 14 of them exist. They are divvied up among the different crystal systems as shown. And this summarizes what we just went through with calculating the number of atoms per unit cell. That does it for this video. Allow me to introduce you to Gus, the newest member of the Kaler and IM Diffraction Facility family. Gus and I both thank you for watching and we hope you have a great day.